Welcome to Prisma Health's Kidney Transplant Program. We are honored to be part of your transplant journey and look forward to working with you and your family through this process. We want to assure you that you're in expert hands. Our team members have many years of transplant experience. As you meet each of our team members today, they will discuss transplant from their area of specialty. Please feel free to ask questions. As you view this video, we encourage you to write down any questions that come up so we can make sure we have answered your questions. After you viewed this presentation, you will meet with several members of our transplant team. You will meet with our transplant surgeon, transplant nephrologist, social worker, pharmacist, dietitian, and financial coordinator. Each of them will come to your exam room and will talk with you about transplant from their area of expertise. This consult session takes about three and a half hours. The second part of the evaluation is diagnostic testing. The testing will vary a little for each patient and depends on your age, medical history, and what testing you may have already had done recently. Let's start by talking a little bit about kidney failure and the different treatment options for chronic kidney disease. As you may know, one treatment option is dialysis. You may already be undergoing one of the treatments with either in-center hemodialysis, home hemodialysis, or peritoneal dialysis. Another treatment option is kidney transplant. We like to emphasize that kidney transplant is a treatment option not a cure for kidney disease. Dialysis requires a lot of medical management, including frequent trips to a dialysis center, lab work, medications, diet restrictions, and so forth. But so does transplant. Receiving a kidney transplant trades one set of management and care for another set of management and care. So why choose a kidney transplant? We believe that kidney transplant for many patients is the best treatment option. Transplant offers you freedom from all the time constraints of dialysis. Travel to the dialysis unit several times a week, having to be on the machine for several hours with each treatment. If you are on hemodialysis, there are needle sticks that you must experience with each session of dialysis. There are a lot of dietary restrictions and fluid restrictions. Many patients must take phosphate binders to help manage the phosphorus levels in your blood which can be very unpleasant and difficult to take. Generally, patients who are on dialysis experience lower energy levels and it can be hard for you to enjoy life because you may be drained from dialysis. Transplant offers relief for many of these things and overall improved quality of life for many patients, but kidney transplant is not for everybody. So why not transplant? Transplant requires a major surgery Patients will be in the operating room for two to three hours and then in the hospital for three to five days following the surgery. This can vary by patient. Some patients are admitted even longer than five days. While the risk is very small, we do want to let you know that the transmission of an infection from the donor organ to the recipient is possible. We are fortunate in that we have a lot more specific testing and test results are back very quickly. Donors are tested for everything we can possibly test for to try to minimize this risk, but there is a chance that the donor may have been exposed to an illness or a disease in the hours just before their donation that we would be unable to detect on testing. With kidney transplant, there are medications that will be required from the time you receive your transplant and for as long as it continues to function in your body. These immunosuppression medications are necessary to protect the kidney from rejection. It's important that you are compliant with taking medications to make sure your new kidney lasts as long as possible. If you are not able to take your medications for any reasons, you are at an increased risk for rejecting the kidney and having to go back on dialysis. So we encourage you to think about how you do today with taking your medications. Are you pretty much able to take your current medications on a regular schedule, or is that something that you find difficult? Do you frequently miss medications? You need to evaluate yourself in this regard, because compliance with medications is critical to a successful outcome after transplantation. We mentioned the immunosuppression medications. Let's talk a little bit about your immune system and why it's important. 
Your immune system protects you from germs, viruses, and bacteria that can make us sick. The immune system also plays a role in searching your body for abnormal cells like cancer cells and destroying them. So your immune system is often the first line of defense that protects you from infections and certain cancers. In the same way, your immune system will recognize this new transplanted kidney as a foreign object and try to attack and destroy it. Rejection is your body, your immune system, doing what it thinks it's supposed to do, and that is attacking and getting rid of that new kidney. The immunosuppression medicines we give you after the transplant suppress or weaken your immune system to try to prevent that rejection from happening. When we suppress your immune system, we're reducing your body's ability to help you fight off infections and certain types of cancers. A lot of the testing we do, and the reason the evaluation process is so rigorous, is that we're not just trying to make sure you're healthy enough for the surgery. We also want to make sure you will tolerate the effects of being immunosuppressed. To be on immunosuppression without being at risk of constantly developing infections or having a cancer develop after the transplant. There are some complications from the transplant surgery we want to talk to you about. Anytime you go to the operating room and undergo anesthesia, there are risks, including the need to be on a ventilator or a respirator after the surgery. Some patients may take a few days to recover from the grogginess of the anesthesia, and some patients have bad nausea after anesthesia. There can be bleeding after surgery. It is very rare, but occasionally a patient may need to receive a blood transfusion for bleeding after surgery, or may need to go back to the operating room if the surgeon suspects you may be bleeding. Surgery incisions can become infected. There may be drainage from the incision, or the wound may not heal or may be delayed in healing. Most patients do have some level of pain from surgery. We will work with you and do our very best to manage your pain after transplant. Infections may occur after surgery, particularly pneumonia. Also, blood clots can develop in your legs. Those are things we try to avoid by having you get up and move around as soon as you're able after the surgery. There is also a very small risk of death following a transplant surgery. Another thing we like to let patients know is that not every transplant kidney works right away. Kidneys from a deceased donor undergo a lot of trauma and stress from being removed from the donor, being without blood supply for several hours, placed in ice, and then transported from the donor hospital to our transplant center so it can be transplanted. During that course, one in three kidneys may not work right away. Because of this, you may require some dialysis briefly after the surgery and even leave the hospital still requiring ongoing dialysis for several days or even weeks. Very rarely a blood clot may form in the blood vessels that supply the new kidney and it may have to be removed. That's a very rare complication and your surgeon and care team will monitor you closely for any signs you're experiencing this complication. We've talked about surgical complications. There are also some medical complications that can happen after transplant. If you are diabetic or have borderline diabetes, your blood sugars may become much harder to control after transplant. And in some cases, patients who have never had diabetes develop diabetes. This can be the result of some of the medications that are given post-transplant, or it can just be a result of having a well-functioning kidney. The insulin you inject or the insulin your body produces is broken down and eliminated from your body by the kidneys. When you're in kidney failure, insulin stays in your blood and it circulates longer, helping manage your blood sugar. After a transplant, when you have a great functioning kidney, the insulin in your body is broken down and excreted by the new kidney much more rapidly. This can make your blood sugars harder to control. You may require an increased dose of insulin. Or, if you're on oral medicines, you may have to start taking insulin. Blood pressure can also be harder to control. Your body goes through such significant changes after the transplant that your blood pressure may be much more difficult to control. Again, our team will monitor you closely and work with you and your local nephrologist and any other specialists that we may need to get involved to help manage these complications. Just remember that no two patients are the same. 
Some people may not experience any of these complications. So be aware that we will be working very closely together, monitoring you after the transplant and trying to manage any of these complications that you experience. There can also be some emotional or psychosocial risks of treatment. This is a major surgery. You're going to have to be in the hospital, which puts stress on you, your family members, and the people who help take care of you after the transplant. It can also be very stressful for families and patients while they're waiting on that organ offer to become available, and anxiety about when the transplant is going to happen. When are you going to get that call? There can be guilt and sadness around the fact that the donor has passed away and the family has made this generous gift of life to donate their loved one's organs. This may result in some emotional stress for patients and for their family members. There are a lot of changes that are happening as you go through the whole transplant journey. Some of the medications we give can cause mood swings. We want to talk about these things because we want you to know that these are normal feelings and that we as a team are here to support you in any way we can. So if you are experiencing any of these challenges or difficulties, please communicate with us. Let us know what we can do to help support you and provide resources to help you. You'll meet with your dietitian today. She's going to talk with you about your current diet restrictions and what you may expect after the transplant. As we mentioned earlier, generally the diet is much more liberalized and you'll be able to resume eating a lot of the foods you enjoy after transplant. One of the things that is very important is maintaining a healthy weight going into the transplant surgery. We look at the BMI or body mass index. It is important that your BMI is less than or equal to 38 at the time of transplant. This is because patients who are obese have more complications following surgery. Wound infections, blood clots, pneumonia, all of those things we see at higher incidence in patients who are above a healthy body weight. So that's why we're so stringent and encourage you to work with our dietitian and your dialysis dietitian to try to manage and keep your weight at a healthy level, to manage your phosphorus, potassium, and all the things you may be struggling to manage while you're on dialysis. It's important to manage those things and keep your body as healthy as possible so that when you do get the call for transplant, you are ready to receive that organ transplant. There can be some financial risks to you and your family as you go through the transplant journey. You will meet with our financial coordinator who will talk with you about your insurance coverage and benefits to help you plan for the expense of transplant and medications. If you qualify for Medicare as part of your end-stage renal disease diagnosis, then after the transplant, when you have a functioning kidney, you may lose some of the Medicare benefits you're currently relying on to provide your health care. The Transplant Financial Coordinator will guide you on how to prepare for the costs that may be associated with your transplant hospitalization, the medications you will need to take after the transplant, and longer-term post-transplant insurance coverage. One of the benefits of getting a kidney transplant is that patients who receive a kidney transplant have a longer life expectancy after transplant than patients who stay on dialysis. However, we want to make you aware that during the first three to four months after transplant, there is a slightly increased risk of dying. This is due to the surgical risks of transplant. Undergoing surgery and all the postoperative complications that were discussed earlier put a patient at a slightly increased risk of death for the first three to four months. However, after the initial surgical period, life expectancy with a transplant is longer than patients who stay on dialysis. For some patients with many complex medical problems, remaining on dialysis may be a safer option. Kidneys for transplant can come from a few different sources. Most patients think of the deceased donor kidney in which an individual passes away and their family makes the selfless decision to donate the organs for transplant. But there is also the option of living donation. This is something we strongly encourage you to think about and talk with your family about. Living donor kidneys offer many benefits over a deceased donor organ. We will talk with you about how you can go about seeking out donors and how to talk to your family about your need for a transplant. It is important you know that a living donor does not have to be a blood relative or a family member. 
a living donor can come from people in your community, your church, your workplace, or schoolmates. There are many options for living donors, so we encourage you to explore those. The transplant community is doing everything we can to expand the number of donor kidneys that are available because there are not enough deceased donor organs to meet the needs of all patients who are on the transplant list. At Prisma Health, we also offer a living donor paired exchange, which we'll talk about more later. Paired exchange is used when someone wants to donate a kidney to you, but they're not a direct match. As long as that individual is willing to donate their kidney, we can enter you and that donor into a paired exchange program where we try to find a match for you anywhere in the United States. You may be able to receive a kidney from another living donor who you don't know and your donor can donate to that person's recipient. So there are a lot more options today than there used to be for identifying donors. Why is the living donor a better choice? First, it's a planned surgery. There's no need for you to wait many years on the list for a deceased donor to become available. We can schedule the surgery when it's convenient for you and your donor. This allows you to make sure you are at your very best level of health going into the surgery. You can also arrange to have family members or care providers at home to help take care of things when it's most convenient for you both. Living donor kidneys also tend to work immediately. There is much less chance of delayed graft function or sleepy kidney that we talked about earlier. And generally, hospital stays and recovery are shorter and much smoother with a living donor. And finally, living donor kidneys tend to last longer because the donor who's donating the kidney is as healthy as possible. So those kidneys tend to provide a survival advantage over a deceased donor. We used to think a lot about matching and trying to ensure the best match possible between the donor and the recipient. This slide talks a little about genetics and how matching is determined. However, the degree of match is less important than it used to be. Immunosuppression and our understanding of the immune system and how to monitor for antibodies have made it less important. There still can be some survival advantage for a fully matched kidney versus a partially matched kidney, and either are generally more desirable than a deceased donor kidney in terms of how long a kidney may function after transplant. As we mentioned briefly earlier, a kidney donor profile index of greater than 85 can be a difficult concept to understand. A few years ago, the United Network of Organ Sharing came up with a scoring system to place a numerical score or grade on kidneys, with one being the best kidney and 99 being a less desirable kidney. KDPI takes into consideration factors such as the age of the donor, whether the donor had any particular illnesses, or factors that would result in damage to the kidney, and the creatinine at the time of the organ donation. A KDPI of less than 85 is considered a good standard kidney, but a score over 85 is more of a marginal kidney that may have some scarring or age and may not function for as long as a lower KDPI kidney. A greater than 85 KDPI may last 5 to 6 years rather than the 10 years we might expect with a regular deceased donor kidney with a KDPI score less than 85. However, some patients may choose to be on the list and accept one of these higher KDPI kidneys. Older recipients who may not have 5 or more years to wait for an organ may benefit because higher KDPI kidneys may become available more quickly than a standard kidney. We can talk with you about your case and whether you're interested in being offered a high KDPI kidney. We will not accept a high KDPI kidney unless you have consented to be considered for that. We also want you to know that before we accept any organ offer for transplant, it is reviewed by the transplant surgeon and he will decide whether it is a reasonable kidney to accept for you. Our surgeons and nephrologists have your best interests and the best possible outcome for you at the forefront. We will not offer you a kidney that we do not believe will give you a good chance at a successful outcome. There can be several reasons that a living donor may not be directly compatible for donation directly to you. 
If you have a family member or friend or someone in your community who offers to donate a kidney for you but is not compatible directly with you, then we are able to enter you and your donor into a paired exchange program. Through this, we will try to identify a match for you and facilitate a kidney exchange. Both you and your donor must consent to the paired exchange. We will talk with you in much more detail if this circumstance applies to you. This diagram shows the pair donor exchange and how swaps are created. In this case, the mother is not compatible and able to donate to her son. And on the right, the husband wants to donate to his wife but is not compatible with her. But he is compatible with the son and his mother is able to donate to the man's wife. So a paired donor exchange occurs. It is your right to be on the wait list at multiple transplant centers. You may have already undergone an evaluation at another center and are listed for transplant there. Currently, through the organ allocation strategy, kidneys are donated first within a 250-mile radius or circle around the hospital where the donor is located. Priority is given to patients on the deceased donor wait list who are within that 250-mile radius. Listing at multiple centers in different areas may increase your access to kidneys from donor hospitals in that geographic area. There is little or no benefit to being listed at two centers within a small area. One of the things to also consider is the additional challenges of travel and access to those other centers. If you live in upstate South Carolina, it may be more stressful and difficult for you and your family to be listed at a transplant center in another state. You would be required to travel to that transplant center for surgery and your required follow-up care. Some centers may require that you stay close by for a few weeks or months after the transplant and then return frequently for follow-up care visits. These are all things we encourage you to consider as you're thinking about multi-listing. If you were placed on the wait list for transplant after you started dialysis, your wait time starts the day you started dialysis. That same amount of wait time will apply at each center at which you are listed. For instance, if you started dialysis two years ago and get listed here at Prisma Health and at another transplant center this year, you would have two years of waiting time at both transplant centers. If you were evaluated and listed at a transplant center before you started dialysis, your wait time at that center started on the day they placed you on the waiting list. So let's say three years ago you got listed at Center X before starting dialysis. You would have three years of waiting time there. Then you started dialysis one year ago and are now going to be listed at Prisma Health. Your waiting time at Prisma Health would be the one year since you started dialysis. However, you do have the ability to transfer your waiting time from Center X to Prisma Health if desired. We will talk with you about your individual circumstance and help with any questions you may have if this applies to you. We mentioned earlier that the transplant community is continuously looking for ways to increase deceased donors and use as many organs that are donated as possible. Some centers have special programs that offer kidneys from patients who are hepatitis C positive and transplant those into people who are hepatitis C negative. The recipient of that kidney is then treated for hepatitis C afterwards to cure them of the hepatitis C. This is not something we are currently offering here at Prisma Health, but may be available to you in the future. Similarly, hepatitis B positive kidneys may be accepted for patients who have been vaccinated against hepatitis B and have adequate antibody levels that they are considered immune to hepatitis B. As a dialysis patient, you've likely received the vaccine for hepatitis B. We will check your labs today to make sure you have been immunized and have antibodies. If you have adequate antibodies to hepatitis B, you could receive a kidney from a donor who has had previous exposure to hepatitis B, and we know that you would be protected from developing that hepatitis. We are not currently accepting organs from donors who are actively infected with hepatitis B. We have covered a lot of information here and understand that you may have many questions. We are grateful that you are here and have entrusted us with your transplant care. 
We look forward to being able to provide you answers to any questions you may have. Please don't hesitate to ask any of the care providers you meet today. We will do our very best to make sure you get answers before you leave. We will also make sure you have our contact information. You are always welcome to call us with any questions or concerns that arise as we go through this journey together. Thank you for your attention.